I was asked recently to make a video on some basics, uh, how to cut straight with a handsaw in particular. This is something that a lot of people really have a hard time with when they start uh, using hand tools. Since I use both Western and Japanese tools, I figured I'd show how to cut using a Japanese steel back saw and also a Western dovetail saw. They're basically the same saw except that the Japanese cuts on the pull stroke and the Western saw cuts on the push stroke. So when you put your wood in the vise, this is really important, you want to make sure that the top of the wood is parallel with your bench so that you can use your bench as a reference when you're cutting. We're going to start off using this dovetail saw, western type saw. It's important to have your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder in line with the saw when you're cutting. This is the most important thing when you're cutting. This is what keeps the saw straight and what's enable, what enables you to cut straight down a line. Now, in terms of the finer points of cutting, you want to make sure that your uh, saw is at 90 degree angle with the top of the board and also lengthwise so that it's square on all sides when you're cutting. You maintain this angle by putting your finger, your thumb in this case, against the blade and keeping your thumb there to register the blade against as you keep it straight and you cut. Use full strokes after you start cutting. Uh, that will help maintain the straightness of the cut. You don't want to use uh, short strokes. As my grandfather and father always, always used to tell me, uh, let the saw do the work for you. Don't push too hard. Just glide it over the top of the wood and let the teeth cut in and guide the saw. Let the saw guide itself, rather. So a Japanese saw works the same way. You want to make sure that you have your wrist in line with your elbow and your shoulder. I put my index finger over the top of the, the handle of the saw to keep it straight. Uh, if you want to use a two-handed grip like this, that works well as well. You want to keep your, the handle in the center of your body uh, lined up with your belly button and then pull evenly with both arms to get a full uh, clean stroke. This is a close-up of the Japanese saw again. Uh, same method, just use your thumb against the blade and use your thumb to, to keep the blade straight at a perpendicular angle to the saw and then pull with full clean smooth strokes and let the teeth of the saw do the work for you. So now let's look at how I cut dovetails. Uh, I put a square on the table so that you can see that you're keeping the saw straight and then after I put a couple of straight cuts in the top I tilt the saw to the right or the left depending on which angle I'm cutting and then proceed to cut down the dovetail. Uh, you'll see that I angle the blade up at first and then I lower it slowly to cut down through the top and then I tilt it to the left and cut down the dovetail. Uh, I'm used to doing it this way but you can also take the board and turn it so that the lines are perpendicular to the bench and also the square on your bench which will help you uh, reference it a little better if you're not used to cutting at an angle. This works well for uh, beginners that aren't used to cutting dovetails. But having it the other way uh, makes it quicker because you don't have to move the, the piece of wood back and forth in the vise like this, which takes a little bit of time. So the, uh, the first way I showed you was definitely more efficient. So again, you want to put the saw in at a slight angle to the top. And then once you start cutting, lower the handle down a little bit and then go straight down the cut. Take full strokes so that the saw cuts through with the ease. Next, let's look at the Japanese saw. It has two types of teeth, uh, different teeth on one side. You have your rip cut teeth on your left side, and then if you flip it over, you have your cross cut teeth. Now, what I, what I mean by cross cut is if you take a piece of wood and you cut across it, you're cutting across the grain, so you want to use the cross cut teeth. If you want to cut down along with the grain, which is called a rip cut, then you want to use the rip cut teeth, which are these right here. These Ryoba no Kugiri have cross cut on one side and rip cut on the other, which makes them very uh, convenient. So let's look at how to cut a thicker piece of wood. I'm going to use this Japanese Ryoba no Kugiri and then a tenon saw that is backed with uh, a piece of brass. Now this is a little bit different from cutting thinner wood because you want to make sure that your line is straight on both sides as you cut. But you basically start off the same way. Angle the saw and then start to lower the handle so that you get that first cut uh, really straight on the top of the piece of wood. 
and then once you have that defined, you want to start to lower your handle and then follow that line in the front, on the front of the piece of wood. I'm going to switch this around in my vise here to make it easier to cut. And also I'm going to tilt it on an angle so that um, it'll be easier to follow both the line on top and also the line going down the front. I put my square next to the piece of wood so that I can make sure that I keep my saw straight and perpendicular with the bench and with the piece of wood. And then I gradually lower the handle and cut down on an angle. I then flip the piece over and do the same thing on the other side, cutting down at an angle and gradually lowering the handle of the saw as I follow that line down with my eyes. So I'll speed this part up for you. Uh, after that's done, I angle the board or the, uh, the piece of wood straight again and then cut down uh, straight, basically cutting out the V-shaped piece of wood that has been left over inside the kerf from cutting on an angle on both sides. So cutting with a Japanese saw uh, is the same thing, um, only because this saw cuts on the pull stroke, I want to start on the side of the piece of wood that is closest to me. I take short strokes in order to define that kerf, and I use the cross-cut teeth first. Uh, because they're finer and they're smaller and it's easier to keep them in line when I'm trying to make this initial kerf. Once I've made the initial kerf, I will then flip the saw over and use the rip cut teeth because I am ripping this board. I'm cutting down along with the grain. And also I will angle it just like I did earlier so that I can follow the line that's cut on one side along with the kerf or the line that I've made on the top of the wood. I'll speed the video up here so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. It's the same process as we just saw. So now let's look at dovetails, uh, thick dovetails in particular. When you're cutting dovetails with thin boards, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You can go straight through, but when you're making a thick dovetail, it's easier to use the method that I just taught you. So you start by making the kerf. We're using a western style saw here, so I start at an angle and then I drop the handle to make that initial kerf from the top and then I make short little cuts as I tilt the blade to the right, after which I lower the handle and then follow that pencil line on the front of the piece of wood, and then drop the handle down, 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 down to make that cut on one side. After I've done that, I flip the board over. Oh, I'm sorry, in the video, I, I'm cutting the other side here, but it's the same process. Start by dropping that blade down uh, straight so you make that initial kerf and then make short cuts as you're tilting the blade to the left and then longer cuts again as you drop the handle and follow the line down the front of the board. After you do this, you flip the board around and you do the exact same thing on the other side. And one last time, I'll speed the video up again so that you don't have to sit through the whole song process, but it's the same process. Saw it down at an angle, and then straight down to finish the cut. Now, to get the square shoulders on a dovetail, you want to start off by using a marking knife and um, scribe a line where your shoulders will be. You carry this line over to both sides using the square, and then you use a chisel to cut a knife wall, as Paul Sellers refers to it, into the piece of wood, like this. Now the knife wall basically serves as a guide for your saw. I've made a, a large knife wall here on a piece of wood so you can see what it looks like up close. And what you're doing is you're taking the saw and you're putting it in against that knife wall. and that. So what keep your, keeps your saw straight and uh, 90 degrees perpendicular to the piece of wood. You're also using your thumb though, you can't see it in this picture, but uh, use your thumb on the left side of the blade and that will, along with the knife wall, uh, will keep the saw perpendicular and give you nice square shoulders that you don't have to uh, plane or do anything with after you cut them.
that's how you cut a thick dovetail. Simple as pie. You can, of course, clean it up with a chisel if you need to. You can see one little diagonal saw mark there, but um, pretty much you're good to go. So I hope this helps those of you that are just starting out, and uh, thanks for watching.